take four rounds of breath, inhaling through your nose, allowing the body to fill and inflate, perhaps even creating a little bit of length through your body. And exhale, we melt and sit back into our seated position. We'll continue with three more breaths as I give you a little introduction to this yin class. So what we're working with is our heart space, anapata or our heart chakra. Appropriate at the time of uh, filming this class or doing this class on Zoom with the, the wind, wild weather that we've got at the moment, the wind. So obviously our heart space is the element of air within our bodies. I'm also going to tie in Anahata with the Yamas, so our ethical disciplines. We're going to continue with the breathing exercise as we add our finger fans. So finger fans, we're stimulating our heart meridian by extending your arms out at your shoulder height in front of the body. So your heart meridian travels from the heart across the shoulders all the way down inside of your arms to your pinky finger. So the pinky finger is the first thing that begins to curl in towards the hand. Then the ring finger follows, the middle, the index, the thumb wrapping over all of your fingers. The fists begin to curl and the elbows bend. Fists coming in all the way to the shoulders as you lift your elbows high to the sky and the breath in. And on the exhale, turn the elbows to the side of the room, unfill the arms and pressing the palms out towards the side. And then begin the inhale from the side. Pinky, ring, middle, index, and thumb. Fist curling in, elbows bend. Inhale, elbows high to the sky. And forward on the exhale, pressing palms out. We'll do three more rounds of our finger fans. Inhaling to curl the fingers in. Lift the elbows high to the sky. Exhale, turn to the sides, unfurl. Inhale from the sides. And exhale forward. Breathing in. And exhale. Breath in. And exhale. One more round. Inhale. Exhale, breath in, and exhale forward. So we started to stimulate or create a little bit of movement along the heart meridian line, and we're going to work with that flow of energy or the chi moving through the body. As we bring our hearts back towards our heart, but keeping a space between the palms of the hands. And what we could do is you just start to create a less and less space between the hands without them touching. And we're just finding that point that we can hold, gently pulse the hands in and out from each other. And maybe beginning to feel that's kind of like that magnetic or repelling energy. So it's both like they're being drawn together and pressing apart at the same time. We're just going to work with that flow. And then we're going to bring that into our heart by bringing the right hand to rest on the heart, your left hand over the top. So that's your feminine nursing your masculine into your heart. And we melt forward into our first posture, which is the seated butterfly. So seated butterfly and soles of the feet together to touch. Knees dropping open wide, you might like to bring pillows into the knees for knees. This gives them a little extra support and comfort. And we're melting heart forward, rounding through the spine, opening up through the back of your heart space, dropping chin towards the chest, all the way down. And we have first posture we start to uh, just bring our awareness to how ahimsa and non-violence would show up in our life. So ahimsa is the very first yam. 
it's always important when we're talking about these yanas to remember they exist in more than one plane or one form of expression. So we're talking about how these yanas affect both our physical actions, our words, and also our thoughts. Each of these start as a thought within the body, and then that thought will then grow or um, mutate or turn into some other form of expression. A reminder that thoughts are just ripples, and if we get caught up in those ripples, they carry us along and we turn into something else. So, if we can manage to catch a ripple or identify a ripple and just let it fade out at its own time as we tune into our breath. Now, Ahimsa in our practice on the mat can show up in a few different ways. In ways that we may manipulate or push our bodies to a space that doesn't really offer us any benefit of service in any positive way. In fact, it can start to cause harm to the body. That could be in yin, putting yourself in a posture that you start to move out of that sensation or some sort of feeling and it's moving into pain. So it's important to be able to identify what is pain and what is simply a, a space that you're sitting in that's um, that's kind of bringing something up, something to work through. Obviously, we don't want to overload the system with either the physical sensation or any emotional sensation that begins to flow through the body. So we monitor both of those sides. At any point, you feel either the physical or the emotional or anything else starts to get a little bit overwhelming. That's fine. We just Ease out of the posture slightly, adjust yourself, make sure you're comfortable, and then working back into the level that suits you. So that's the physical side of the hips are showing up in the practice, but how about how we're treating ourselves in our thoughts or our internal words? What starts to pop up? Are we able to treat ourselves with that true compassion? and allow everything to release and let go. And for the next minute here in your seated butterfly, you might even explore if there's a little extra space to drop down between the legs or perhaps the knees start to fall further out towards the side. Transition straight from seated butterfly into dragonfly. Both forward folding positions. If you have pillows under the knees, you will need to slide them out to the side. We're extending the legs and taking them out wide, but we'll continue to drop forward and release down. little gestures that the body can start to give us with how we're feeling in certain positions or perhaps the type of energy that we're bringing into the practice. So in a position like a forward fall, if you're not hugging a prop in towards your chest and say perhaps your arms are stretched out, just notice whether you have palms turned up or palms turned down. Palms turned up will be more of an energizing approach to the posture. Palms turned down is quite grounding and restful. Neither is right or wrong, it's more just your body communicating with you where we start to really dial in and listen to the heart and feel to what the body is trying to tell us. Communication always starts with the breath, noticing how your breath changes through each experience of each day and even here in the practice of each posture. The breath will give you an indication to the amount of sensation that you're inviting into your postures. So if you ever find that your breath is getting a little sharper or short, or perhaps hitting a point of tension or resistance, that might be a sign that you just need to modify the posture slightly. And if you're questioning whether you've gone too deep into a posture and you'd like to ease out, 
or let's say come to the breath and notice if the breath is nice and slow and flowing then perhaps you just met a really nice space that you can work with and sit in for a little bit longer and so that's the power of ahimsa to not only notice or identify when you've gone too far but to maybe notice when you haven't gone far enough and so we can harm ourselves in both ways right either pushing too hard or never going to our full potential Take another six breaths in the sea of dragon. Slowly walking your hands back, lengthening up through the spine. You might like to sway the feet here from side to side just to get a little bit of a release through your lips. We're moving now into some of our first heart opening postures of the sequence. So the first heart opener is Sphinx Pose. So we're sweeping our legs around on the mat to come down onto your abdomen. If you prefer a supported sphinx, you can slide a pillow so it's pressing up against the ribs and against the backs of your triceps. If you're happy to support yourself without any propping, that's fine, you can put them to the side. And in our heart openers, we can move on to the second yellow, the satya, or truthfulness. I suppose it's nice in any practice when we're working with truthfulness is to be true with how we're treating the postures. Whether we're truly switching off the activation of the muscles and allowing the body to sink into different positions. And in a posture like a heart opener here in Sphinx, we need a little bit of activation through the arms to hold the body up. But we can let the rest of our body relax. And that includes the shoulders. The shoulders can melt back. The abdomen starts to make more connection with the earth. If you'd like to increase the sensation through the lower back, that's done through the legs. The legs closer together will be gentle. As the legs widen out towards the sides, it's just going to give the hips a little bit more space to move and perhaps even a little more extension through the lumbar spine. And then with your choice with how you'd like to support or hold your head, you can hold upright. If you prefer to drop the chin towards your chest, you can drop the head down and bow forward. And I always like to talk about sati or your truthfulness being a direct link to your breath. The breath Again, it doesn't lie, it tells you how it feels in any situation and any posture. Take another minute here in this heart opening position where you can remain in your sphinx or if you'd like to take it a little deeper in the seal pose with the hands walking out towards the side of the mat. There's a little more activation here for the arms as you press the hands into the floor, straightening through the arms, but still allowing the rest of the body to relax and sink into that spinal extension.
the general posture you've taken will slowly lower the arms down and across the right arm across the top of the mat and bring the left on top of the right. Forehead then comes down on top of your arms. Here, if you'd like to get the hips a little wriggle from side to side, just to release through the lower back. And we'll be at neutral position to reset the body before we move further through this class. Next shape starts to work a little bit deeper into our heart moving line where you might even feel a little bit tingling through the hand. So again, as long as it's not causing any pain in that position, it's fine to hold. And this is the straight jacket. So with straight jacket, taking your left arm, weaving it underneath your right armpit so it comes across the front of the chest. And then the right arm moves over to the left side. So we're crossing the arms to opposite sides of the mat underneath the body. You can bring a pillow at the front of the mat to rest the forehead and maybe your shoulders onto. Or if you'd like to do this without props, it's always nice just to shift the body forward a little bit as you then begin to fold down. So what happens when we start to work into these meridian lines a little bit deeper when we create a compression or maybe just temporary blocking that flow of chi through the body it's important to remind yourself that chi is your vital energy. Your vital energy being the oxygen, oxygenated blood flowing through the body. So essentially, yes, we are just slightly blocking that flow through the limbs. And that's why it's important with some of these deeper postures to take that time to rest in a neutral position in between. Which is what we'll do in a few moments after we exit from our straight jacket on this side. But just for here for the next six breaths, we'll start to get heavier and drop further forward, feeling that nice sensation of opening through the backs of the shoulders. One more breath in, and exhale. We're returning to stacking the forearms at the front of the mat, only this time let's bring the left arm underneath, your right arm on top, and then bring your right ear on top of your right arm. Bring awareness to the shoulders or wherever you're feeling the strongest sensation in your straight jacket posture. And we will just notice how that begins to fade until it just returns, I guess, to a normal state. So there's no feeling there, no tingling through the body. We'll take our straight jacket on the second side. But from here, I'm taking the right arm and weaving it under the left armpit. And then take the left arm and reach it towards the right side of the mat. And then making any of the adjustments you would like to make, props, or shifting the body forward, to bring all of your weight down onto the backs of your arms.
Take two more breaths. And on the release, you take the right arm underneath, the left arm on top, and this time the left ear resting down on top of the arms. From here with our shoulders nice and lengthened and open, we're moving into another heart opening position, which is your heart melting or anahatasana. That's why we're bringing the hips directly above the knees. If you'd like to use pillows here underneath the chest, that will support you as you reach your arms all the way out along the mat and then begin to melt the heart down through the arm. Now in a strong position like this, Important to become aware of a stayer or non-stealing. And I always refer to non-stealing as taking more than what we need. And that can appear here in the posture. If you're extending and opening up beyond the capabilities of the body to support or to what again ventures into that space of pain. Well, then when taking away, we're stealing from what the posture can truly offer us. So remember to make any adjustments, any support that you'd like to add. And then we get heavy and heavy and melts. And if you bring your awareness to your heart meridian line, you can see how this traveling through the heart along the arms all the way out through to the little fingers. We're lengthening and stretching all the way through that meridian wall. Take six more breaths. And we'll start to gently and slowly bring the body up and walking the hands back. We'll now bring the knees together to touch and a little counter for the body as we drop the hips back to the heels, rounding the spine over the tops of your thighs, maybe even reaching the hands back in line with the feet and allowing the shoulders to drop forward. Bringing yourself all the way back up. 
going to sweep the feet out from underneath the body and extend them out along the mat. So we're in a seated position with legs extended. You're going to bend the right knee, step it over the top of your left leg. And then from here, taking the arms around the right knee, giving it a hug and drawing your forehead, your heart in towards your leg, your right leg. Now from here, if hugging the knee in is enough, you can stay in this position. Or we'll take a little twist. We'll be in the twist for, uh, let's say, nine breaths. So it's about a minute and a half. For a gentle twist, we'll twist towards the left side. For a deeper twist, twisting towards the right. And as we... Moving into the next round of the sequence, we'll introduce you to Brahmakara or the correct use of your energy. And so when we're working with Brahmakara, it's important to, I guess, do a little bit of self-assessment in your actions and notice where you're sending energy into processes that don't really contribute to where you're actually heading or where your goal is. So that could show up in places like when uh, you're working towards something and you're too focused on how somebody else is, is moving with their process rather than keeping your all of your attention on your own work. That can show up in classes when you're too focused on what everyone else is doing in a posture and you forget to check in with how a position is working for you. So it's nice here where we have three options. If you prefer to hug the knee, that's nice and restorative. You have a gentle twist, or if you'd like a little bit more of a ring through the body, and we can take this deeper twist. We'll be here for the next three breaths. Now from wherever you are, we'll swivel the heart to face back towards the front of the mat into our half shoelace. We're going to tuck and maybe stack the right knee on top of the left if that's accessible for you. If stacking the knees doesn't work, you can always completely unbind the legs and bring the sole of the foot to the inner thigh. Now through the arms, we can either reach the arms down either side of the extended leg or you can weave your right arm underneath your left arm into that eagle garudasana bind. The hands can be on the shoulders or backs of the pants, all the palms touching. And then from here, you can start the bow forward. I always like to use this mobile app uh, analogy whenever I'm talking about Brahmakara because for me it just made the most sense of being able to relate it to something. And I call this one the, the Windy Weather app, which I'm sure if you've done my classes you would have heard this story before. And I can tell you since when I first uh, I shared this in class, I confirmed that yes, the Windy Weather app is closed. So for me, the Windy Weather app was like this application that was running that was forever draining my energy and motivation and I didn't have any idea that it was running in the background. So I say the mobile phone analogy because you can imagine your phone battery just always dying, always having to be charged what seems like every two hours and then it turns out it was just something running in the background that was using the battery. And so that happened with us as well. When we have processes or things or experiences or anything it could be that's running in the background, absorbing your energy, taking it away from where you prefer or rather direct it, or that's just like in my case, completely taking any motivation to do anything on a windy day. Once I identified where that was coming from or where it originated, for me it was quite simple to close. Other times it can take a little bit more work. But then to be aware that if you're not 
still working on that process or still working on that self-assessment, it's quite easy for these things to open up again and to be aware of when they start to make their way back in, just the same as we do with thoughts, be aware of the thoughts as they flow and just making sure that we're not getting too carried away or letting something take over our process. Have another four breaths. And then we'll make our way up to a seated position. If our arms are up, twisted and bound, we'll unravel. We extend both legs out along the mat, maybe even just giving the feet a little rock from left to right. We'll take that onto the second side. The right leg stays extended and the left foot steps up and over. You want to start by hugging the knee in towards the chest and bowing your head forward. And as was offered on the first side, you need to continue to hug your knee towards your chest or take a gentle twist, which would be to the right, or a deeper twist, which would be to the left. We'll start to shift the gaze to the front of the mat, allow the body to follow. Half shoelace set up with either the left knee stacking on top of the right, or again, you can take the sole of the foot to the inner thigh if finding the legs doesn't quite work. As you fold forward, you can extend and reach the arms out with the palms turned up, or with this time we can weave the left arm underneath the right and fold forward.
working your way back up to the seated position. Unwrap our arms and legs and allowing the feet to do that little rock from left to right. We will make our way back onto the mat into fish. Fish pose will stack some pillows or props up behind the body. We're creating an opening or an extension through the thoracic spine, so the upper chest and heart. So basically we're going to line up the base of the shoulder blades with the bottom of your props. So we can get that opening happening up here through the upper chest. Allow the shoulders to peel and roll open. Arms coming down, arms facing up. Your legs can be extended, or if you'd like to create opening there through the hips, you can also bring the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to drop open. And so this is the ultimate gesture of opening, particularly if the feet are together and the knees are dropping open as both well draw heart and our hips. And working that in with our yet last yama of parigraha. And the parigraha is about non-grasping or non-attachment and non-possessiveness. So as well, apart from the obvious of these things of not always reaching or grasping, it's a reminder to be content with what you have and what you've earned and what you've worked towards to really take the time to absorb the knowledge or to absorb the posture that you're in. So this can be quite a big, deep opening through the body, through the heart. We breathe into the posture, we reach exhale. Maybe feeling more of the lower back begin to release down towards the earth. More of the shoulders rolling open. And the paragraph is so appropriate in our world these days where everything seems so disposable and there's always something new available. And we get too caught up in the motion that we're just bouncing from one thing to the next to the next and never really taking that time to appreciate what we have or the smaller, finer things in life. We find through all of the yamas is always that sim uh, similar tie of the breath and the quality of the breath. And that ability to bring us into the current moment or into our current state and really to absorb and, and take on whatever we're feeling, whatever we have and appreciating it. Providing us with our full source of energy. Take another minute here in supported fish with the option to now reach the arms up and overhead where the arms can float or you can also take hold of your elbows and allow the arms to rest.
And if the arms are up and overhead, nice and slowly bringing them back down to the side. If you had the soles of the feet together and the knees open wide, hands then come underneath the knees and gently lift the legs up together to touch. Or we'll exit fish by rolling over onto your right side and curling up into a fetal position. You might even like to bring your right hand back to rest on your heart and the left hand on top of the right. Have your pillows still resting on your mat, and slide them often to the side so you can roll over and coming onto your back. Now on here we'll set ourselves up for our reclining twist. We we'll have two options, so the knees bent. Option one would be to lower the knees over towards the left side and keeping the knees together. If you'd like to add the bind, then we'll lift the right leg up and over your left, maybe even tucking the toes behind the calf. If you've taken the bind of the legs, shift your hips in the opposite direction to the twist. So that just allows the spine to sit in a neutral position as your knees lower all the way over to the left side. Shoulders stay anchored and connected to the earth so the heart stays open. Then we don't want to force this twist. So if the knees are hovering, and you'd like a little bit of support, you can always take a block or a pillow here and bring it underneath the knees so they can rest up on something. Otherwise, if they touch down, you can allow them to touch down. Start to take the legs back up and through center. Releasing the bind with your breath. We'll set the feet out towards the outside edges of the mat and allow the knees to fall in towards each other. Bring the feet back in together to touch. And either dropping the legs straight over to the right side, or again, if you'd like to take a bind, we'll weave left leg up and over. Shift the hips to the left as you lower your knees to the right.
legs return to the center, unravel, a little release as they step as wide as the side of the mat and the knees fall in towards each other. From here with the knees slightly elevated, if you'd like to bring any support underneath the knees before extending out into your final resting chip, you can slide a block or your pillow or blanket. You can keep the knees slightly elevated, legs extend out, feet drop into the side, arms resting down, palms turned up. As we settle into our final resting position, we stand from the heart, traveling across the shoulders, all the way down the inside of the arms into the pinky finger into your heart meridian. We'll just recall our guided steps through our yamas, starting with the himsa, which is your non violence or non harm. Satya, which is the act of truthfulness. Asteya, which is non stealing. Brahmakara, the correct use of energy. And the paragraph of non grasping. Allowing everything to melt into the mat with each exhale. Feel the shoulders begin to roll back. The heart space opens with each breath in.
and we open up body in complete stillness. Let's first bring awareness to the breath, the element of air traveling into the body. Maybe the abdomen expands, the chest and lungs fill, perhaps even a light feeling traveling through the rest of the body. And we're releasing that with the exhale, allowing the chest to fall, the abdomen to drop, body still melting back into your Shavasana. With your next inhale, send your awareness from the heart out through the arms all the way to the pinky finger. And your pinky finger begins to wriggle and that movement then travels to your ring, your middle, your index and your thumb. The hands begin to wriggle. And exhale. With the next breath, then we send awareness the opposite direction to the toes. Through the big toe, the second, third, fourth, and the little. Your fingers and toes have returned to life. With your next breath, then full body stretch, legs lengthen, toes point, arms sweeping overhead, reach out through the tips of the fingers, and sigh through an open mouth, exhale. And give the knees a big hug and squeeze in towards the chest. If you'd like to add a little rock from side to side, feel free to begin to rock your body. And then we'll eventually roll all the way down to your right side, returning to the fetal shape. We'll hold here for three breaths. When you're ready, nice and slow and gently, making your way all the way up into your seated position. We'll roll through the shoulders as you lengthen through your spine. You sweep the arms out wide, taking them overhead. Pressing your palms together to touch and bringing your prayer to slide through the third eye across your throat, and to rest at your heart. Now from here, you can keep your palms pressing together in your Anjali Mudra. If you'd like to take that into Padma Mudra, which symbolizes the opening of your heart, we'll peel back the index, the middle, and the ring fingers, so we're creating a lotus shape with the hands. And each time I work through the yamas, it's a constant reminder that this is a process and a process of creating a little bit of balance. So sometimes we fall and we have to get back up and we try again, but we learn from each time. And to reinforce this concept of balance in our yoga practice, we'll complete this class with a few rounds of Samavriti. Now Samavriti is the equal square breath. All sides of the breath are equal, the inhale, the exhale, and the pause. Sometimes it's helpful to imagine a square just floating in front of you off in the distance. And as you inhale, we'll move up the left side of that square. And then gently a pause with the breath as you move across the top of the square. Exhaling down the right side. and pausing across the body. I'll offer a four count for the next round. Four, three, two, one, and pause. Four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Pause, four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one.
We'll take another two rounds if you'd like to lengthen or shorten the count, making any of those adjustments. Equal on all sides, inhale, and the pause, and your exhale. After you've completed your two rounds, if your hands are in your lotus seal, we'll press the palms together to touch. Hold them here for another breath in. Bowing forward on your exhale. As we say, Namaste.